What's up YouTube? I'm Blake and this is my video for Apple's newest all-in-one computer, the late 2012 iMac. For this video, I'm just going to get it out of the box and talk about some of the physical differences. You can see I have here my mid-2011 27-inch iMac and I'll be using that for some comparison. The new model I have here is 21.5 inches because the 27-inch version isn't shipping quite yet. And here it is, all unboxed. You can see from the front it looks very similar to previous models. It's got the same edge-to-edge -edge glass display with an aluminum chin, and it comes with the same wireless keyboard and magic mouse. When you turn it to the side, though, you can see that it's very, very thin. Five millimeters at the edge, and it does get thicker as you get closer to the base in the back, but um, quite a bit thinner at the edge compared to the older models. For comparison, the older models were about an inch thick at the edge. In order to make the new IMAX this thin, Apple did have to make some design sacrifices. Most notably, there's no disk drive in the new model. If you need to use CDs or DVDs with your iMac, you'll have to buy an external super drive or similar device. Also, they have taken the SD card slot, which used to be right on the side of the iMac, and moved it to the back so it is actually a little bit less accessible now. And finally, there are no user upgradable memory slots in the 21.5 inch model. I've read the 27 inch model will have slots for users to upgrade the memory, but for the 21.5 inch model, make sure that what you buy is what you want, and if you want to upgrade, you should do a built to order model. One of the main features of the new model is not just the thinness of the display, but some of the engineering features that have gone into it. You can see I've turned off the display on the old model, and it's actually quite a bit more reflective. If I move my hand, you definitely can see the reflection in the old model and the new model. I can see a little bit off camera here, but it's greatly reduced. Another thing they've done is they've actually laminated the LCD panel inside the computer to the front glass of the display itself, and they did that to achieve better color accuracy and overall image quality. Some of you may have seen the video I made where I installed an SSD into this iMac, and I remember including at least one picture where the glass on the front was actually removed so you could see the LCD panel, that the screen itself, underneath. So that means there's actually a little bit of a gap between the glass on the front and the panel underneath. And with the new model, they were able to eliminate that gap and that's how they're able to offer the better image quality. Now let's talk a little bit about what has changed on the inside. These are the specifications for the 2012 model that I have here. You can see Apple has, of course, included Intel's latest Ivory Bridge processors. This one has the 2.9 GHz version. The memory is a little bit faster. Also, I thought it was interesting, presumably to save space, they did switch to 2.5 inch internal hard drives, and that's compared to 3.5 inch internal hard drives that they've used in the past. We'll have to see what kind of effect that has on disk speed performance. They've also switched back to NVIDIA graphics from AMD slash ATI chipsets. And last, the four USB ports are now USB 3.0 compatible. Next, I'm going to show you a cold boot into a new user profile, and just for fun, I've configured the same thing on the 27-inch model. As a note, I do expect the 27-inch model to win because it has an SSD installed, but you never know. Uh, we'll see what happens. Both of them are turned off completely right now, so I'll turn them on at the same time. As that's happening, I just wanted to mention, if you guys have an iOS device like an iPhone, iPad, or iPod Touch, and you're signed up for Game Center, go ahead and add me. My last name is Coddington, and that is my Game Center name too. I'll put that at the bottom of the screen. Um, you can see the 27-inch model is at the desktop. The 21.5-inch model is still at the gray Apple logo screen. It should also be noted that neither one of these models has an external drive attached which can slow down the boot up process. There it is, it's at the desktop, the 21.5 inch model, so a little bit slower. Um, not too bad though. Next, let's quickly review some temperature and fan speed information courtesy of the iStat Nano dashboard widget. You can see the new model is reporting a temperature of 79 degrees Fahrenheit and a fan speed of about 1400 RPM, while this model is reporting 94 degrees Fahrenheit with about a thousand RPM. So a little bit warmer with a slower fan speed here, a little bit cooler with a higher fan, fan speed. Um, and I did want to note that they're actually both very quiet. I am not able to hear the fans 
running on them right now. Here are the Geekbench 2 results for both systems. Remember that Geekbench measures processor and memory performance, so it's no surprise that the new model with better and faster processor and faster memory scored higher at 10,232 compared with this old model, 8585. The new model also scored higher on all of the subscores compared with the older model. Here are the Nova Bench results. The new model scored 959 and the old model scored 991. Nova Bench awarded a higher score to the older model for having more memory, regardless of the fact that it was a little bit slower. It awarded higher scores to the new model for CPU and graphics testing, which is to be expected. And it did award a higher hardware score to the older model, mainly because of the faster SSD drive. Here are the results of another benchmarking program I'm using for the first time. It's called iBench, and it's free. The developer says it checks and compares the CPU and memory subsystem performance of your Macintosh. The new model scored 7.08, and the old model scored 6.62, and that equates to about a 7% difference or improvement um, in the new model which is not surprising again because of the better memory and better processor. The next test is Cinebench where we'll see comparison of graphics and processor performance. I'm going to start the graphics test first on both of them right now. And here are the results. The new model 39.99 frames per second compared with 41.45 frames per second for the graphics test on the old model. Now let's start the CPU test. And here are the results. 4.09 points for the CPU test on the old model and 5.06 points for the CPU test on the new model. That's an increase of 25% in performance. Last but not least, the Blackmagic disk speed test where I'm of course expecting the older model to win, again because of my SSD upgrade but I'm still interested to see what the results will be for the newer model uh, with the smaller, slower hard drive and I'll be able to compare that to the results with the 3.5 inch 7200 RPM drive that was originally in this model. And let's start them both. Almost uh, approximately 150 megabytes per second right on the older model, about 90 megabytes per second right on the newer model. 450 megabytes per second read on the older model and 100 megabytes per second read on the newer model. For comparison, here's a screenshot of the results for this same test when it was performed on the traditional hard drive installed in my 2011 iMac. So the hard drive in the new 2012 iMac was able to score better write and read results despite the fact that it's smaller and has a slower rotational speed. And that's all I wanted to cover for this video of the new thinner 2012 iMac. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below or send me a message. If you thought this video was helpful in any way, I encourage you to like, comment, and subscribe. My name is Blake, and thanks for watching.